Well, it doesn't always have to be about typewriters. I also like other vintage stuff, so I got this cool numbering stand. But uh, as you can see, there's rust everywhere. So now I'm going to have to figure out how to take this apart and clean it completely. Which might be tricky because I noticed that one of the screws here is gone and instead there's a ton of brass in there. But we'll see what we can do. Maybe I can't take it apart completely, but we'll see where we get. Don't give me that look. You're on right, not everything's typewriters. Let's get started. So I doused everything already in some penetrating oil to help me remove all these old screws. I already figured out that this top knob screws off. I'm gonna put some pressure against it because I'm afraid the giant spring from the inside is gonna fly out. There we go, that's the spring. Alright, that's that. Now let's see if I can remove these bottom screws. Or at least a few of them. Mm. Don't my head is just too much for this one. I'll try to just fix the middle of head. Is it already loose? Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's a longer one. I hope I didn't miss anything. Or this one broke off. Oh, we'll see. Put it back to the box. Nice. On the other side, that's gonna be trickier. That thing over there. Let's see if we can manage at least a bit. Oh, it's still there, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, the other screw has gone to hell and back into the sea. Alright. Another different size. Oh, this is a big one. Now, the question is, how do I get the other side to get up to? Oh, there we go. We just molded it back in. Yeah, right. So that's out. I might need to find a replacement screw for that one. But we're getting somewhere. Right. Time to bag and tag these. I think this entire thing can come out if I remove these two screws. Let's do that first. Let's find a nice big screw head that fits in there. This one seems fine. Was it a tough one? Oh, no. <laughs> it's not the screw that gave way. It's the bloody bit that gave way. Oh, 
Well, let's try some other things then. This ring seems to come off like so. Maybe it's not meant to go like that. There we go. Right. And I'm gonna have a crack at these. Fairly easy. There we go. That's out. Which also look rather gnarly. Right, this one is going. One. See the other one. Hopefully, it will fit. Let's see if I have another bit that might fit. But it's in an awkward location. So, and this bit head fits. Let's see if I can just force it out with this one. Then. Wiggling has worked. It's finally decided that it can come out. All right, progress. There we go. That's a little indicator. Let's remove to see if I can get this lever thing out. No, that one doesn't fit. This one does fit. Continue with a regular screwdriver. To get this shoulder screw out. There we go. Now I can also just move this out of the way. Next up, these tiny little springs, they should come off. Relatively easy. That's the idea anyway. Oh yeah, this one is going already. One. There goes number two. Penetrating while doing its work. Huh, multiple springs. Okay. That's a bit unexpected. So there's four in the back and then one on top of that. Alright. Probably has a 
specific reason. Let's put that on the side for now. And then there's these four more things. Close and save this one. Just close them up again after as well. Yep. So now I can just flip these back. And I can access well, almost anything. It's still gonna be tricky because inside these, uh, between these wheels, which is a bit annoying, but okay. I'll manage. Let's get these off. Right, that's loose. Now I can go off with just a regular screwdriver. One. And two. So I doubt it in some WD 40. And now I'm gonna. Work everything. With this brass brush. Maybe I'm looking to speed this. Yeah, the bills fell off smooth. starting to look a lot better uh, so that's what I'm gonna do to this entire thing getting rid of as much rust as possible right so I gave the gave you the once over with a Dremel and different brushes it's already looking a lot cleaner but there are still some areas that I couldn't reach properly like for example over here you can still see gunk and also inside the shaft over here. Let's see if I can get you guys a view in there. Well, you'll have to trust me, it's still dirty. Well, I can't get in there with the Dremel, but what I can do is use a bit of steel wool. And this little fella. should aid me greatly in cleaning the inside. There we go. Now the only thing left for me to do is rinse everything. This is all metal. Normally I would stay away from stuff like acetone when I'm working on a typewriter, but in this case I think it's pretty safe to be using it to rinse all remaining leftover solvents. And I just need that over there. It's gonna make a little string out of it and then There we go, all nice and shiny. And 
looking a lot better already. Cool. Since I'm unable to dismantle the entire thing, I'm gonna do the next best thing, and that is uh, flossing it with a thin piece of steel wool. This, this has already been wetted a bit. And now I can just floss in between those wheels. It's always better to be able to completely dismantle it, but since those two side things don't want to budge, that doesn't leave me much choice. There we go. It's looking better, it's a bit more over here, and afterwards of course, you need to rinse the entire damn thing, and make sure all of these lovely threads are still in there. But it works! There we go. And then of course there's also the matter of remaining bits of gunk. You can just take a cotton swab. And just go over and in between every little bit. Probably not be able to fully clean this thing this way because there's always some crevice or some dirt is still left. But I'm pretty sure you'll be able to get the most out of it. That's isopropyl alcohol, by the way, that I'm using. But at least this thing is already moving freely again because it was completely jammed when I got it. Oh, I'm gonna be using a bit more Q-tips today. I'll show you guys the results later on. Well, I got everything um, dremeled with a brass brush, so all major rust spots are off. Now it's time to do the final steps. Polishing. First take a soft rag, dip it in some water, wing it a bit, put a dab of this stuff on it, of course. This will defer if you use something else. And then just start polishing it. Dry piece of the rag to clean everything off. There we go. All nice and shiny. Maybe I'll do this one on screen as well.
it right off. And now I just need to do everything else. Public service announcements, don't polish metals while listening to uh, faster uh, music like EDM style or something, you might over polish the metal. Well, that's done. Now it's time for the finishing touches and it's adding uh, a little bit of wax on everything all the pieces before I put them back together for an extra layer of protection it's fairly easy just take renaissance wax for example soft cloth put a little bit of wax on rub it all over your metal object it goes a long way And just leave it drying a bit. So I'm probably going to wax all of these pieces. And when I'm done with the last one, you'll see that there's, there's a haze that you can just rub off. So I'll go ahead and wax everything through the magic of editing. Don't know if the camera can properly capture this, but this is now somewhat hazy. So, ready to be polished again, take a very soft cloth. And get that wax off and the result is protected shiny metal. There we go. That looks good. Now it's a matter of doing everything else and then putting it all back together. So one last thing I'm going to do before I put everything back together is add a tiny bit of sewing machine oil. On those gears and just work it in a bit only takes a tiny droplet but it will smooth things up later on Because these things are really close together and cause quite a bit of friction. There we go, much better. That's it, time to put it back together. And here we are, all put back together. I ended up reusing that old screw, I just got to slid in it with a metal saw. And yeah, it works nicely. It's a cool thing, if you ask me. So you can set it to uh, zero, so it doesn't advance, it just keeps giving you the same number. The next setting is just pressing it and then one, and it's the number.
will go up by one. Two, it will keep the same number twice. So now we have three, three, seven, four, eight, eight, three, seven, four, eight, nine, three, seven, four, eight, nine. 90 twice, 91, all the way for the 4 setting, it's all smooth now, all working, I love this thing. Only one thing left to do and that's add new ink to this ink pad, but as you can see it has grooves in there, and at the moment the numbers aren't hitting the ink pad anymore so I'm gonna Try this out. Turn it around. There we go. That's better. <coughs> of course, now I have blotches on it. Nothing, a little bit of alcohol can't fix. There we go. Now you can't use any ink on these things because then those numbers will start corroding again. And that's not what I want. So I bought uh, ink from the manufacturer that makes these stamps, which is uh, oil based ink. Uh, for this one, I have a black one. The red one is for. Uh, another numbering stamp I have. So let's open this thing up. Because the tip over here is still closed. There we go. Just let's Ooh, this is thick stuff. That's gonna be plenty, I think. Now I guess it just needs to soak in there. Which might take a while. So I'm just gonna assist it a bit. That looks like it's working. I'm gonna add just a bit more and then rub it in a bit more again. There we go. That should be enough for my numbering stamp, I guess. There we go. Oh, this is going to be 10,000, isn't it? There we go, one. Yeah, but we're good at keeping it where it is. We add um, the zero mark. I'm gonna 
put my lock it in place for a second like that I'll put this back in there we go and if I did this correctly this should work now let's find out yep seems to work great success now let's see if I can get some other numbers Oops. oh that works nicely job well done I think bye bye